Introducing the Curve Cross Hatch with Perfect Circles Ruler from Constantine Quilts here in Australia. These have been designed and made here in Australia. This ruler has been out of stock for a, quite a while in my no frills range and this is the new version updated with beautiful etched guidelines to assist you with quilting designs on your quilt tops. The added advantage are the uh, perfect tiny circles. Uh, you can stitch a quarter inch, three quarter, one and a half, one and a half an inch circle. And they have etched lines um, on the, uh, the quarter marks of those circles. I'm just going to, in this session, show you a little bit more about curved cross hatching. Curved cross hatching is quite a common treatment on many quilts as an alternative to straight cross hatching. Straight cross hatching using straight lines does require a lot of marking to get them perfect, to make them look really, really good. Um, you don't want to be just a little bit off because it's quite noticeable. Whereas with curved cross hatching, there's a little bit of um, give a little bit of it's a movement um, so it's not nearly as perfect but we do try and keep it as as good as we can it's it's a bit more forgiving curve cross hatching gives a really good three-dimensional feel to many blocks actually but there's a couple of little tricks to understand when you set this up on how you want to do it so I'm just going to demonstrate the first one here in this circle. And the first thing we need to decide is which direction we want our curves to run. More commonly, they are run on 90 degrees to each other. So I may run it right through the center so that it goes through here in that direction and maybe through here in that direction. Now I haven't got that perfect, but it gives me the guidelines. On this ruler, put this under here so that you can see. On this ruler we have a, an etched line on the 90 degree and then we have two more on the 45s. Most of the time we're going to be looking at this one. The etched lines, the echoed lines down here uh, um, are actually mimicking the quarter of an inch uh, curve that you're physically stitching. So that's why they look like they're a little bit closer together at the ends because that curve is mimicking the one that we're going to stitch. Okay, so what we're looking at is to keep our, these are a quarter of an inch apart at these points. So that is how that will help us line it up and keep it as accurate as possible. So it's very easy to twist off the path. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure I've got enough lead, yes. And I'm going to line up the right angle. So that, that line there is following here. And I'm going to choose a half inch grid. So I'm putting the quarter inch, first quarter inch echo line on the edge of the block, on the, assuming it's an applique. And I have lined that up and we're simply going to stitch across and then we're going to go in the ditch and we're going to move this ruler up to that same point again. And you can see where I've stitched. I'll just move that back a bit. If I move it, it exactly goes over the top of that same stitch line is the, the echo line on the ruler. Plus I'm keeping the center line along the direction that I'm wanting to stitch. So I went over that way, I would have stitched in the ditch up here and then I'm ready to go back this way. And I'm gonna stitch in the ditch up out of the way. I'm gonna move my ruler so that it is over the top of my previous stitching and my center line is staying in the direction that I wanna stitch. And if I've gone a little bit too far, I'll just a couple of stitches back and then I'll come across again. Stitch in the ditch along the edge of the applique, move my ruler up, keeping my center marked lines lined up plus my echo lines take my needle back to the ruler and go across stitch in the ditch move my machine up matching 
and stitch back those couple of stitches to then go across. Stitch in the ditch, move my ruler, matching my center direction plus the echo line on the ruler and across. Stitch in the ditch, move my ruler, matching all lines and across. That is the first direction. Then you can choose to either, depending on where you ended up, often if you ended up on this side, I could just simply turn my ruler, line up my guidelines. So I'm lining up this line with that drawn line this time. I could stitch in the ditch all the way around to here, or I would simply tie off and start again. And we're gonna go through the same process, stitch in the ditch, Move my ruler, matching my center line with the drawn guideline, and then come back. Stitch in the ditch, move it forward, lining up all my edge lines, stitch back again to then go across. And across. And there is a curved cross hatch in a circle. So the next one I want to demonstrate is in this heart. Now instead of keeping them at a, a 90 degree, how about we'll do one where it goes right through the center this way. And one possibly that's going on an angle uh, from, the, from the bump. And we'll do it like that just to see the different effect that this may make. So we can start down here again, and I'm lining up my straight line, and my half inch, and I'm gonna go up there, move it forward, keeping that on the line. And of course you can do this quarter of an inch apart, half inch apart, three quarters, even an inch apart. Depending on the density of the quilting that you would like to do. Okay, so from there you would have to pause and you can move the ruler out of the way, stitch in the ditch and come up the other side and then put the ruler back in the right spot to continue over this way. And we could do the same again. Keep lining that up and across to here. And again, you could stitch in the ditch and across to the other side just to finish that one off. So we've got our curves going that way. Now let's see what happens when we turn around and come in this direction. Actually, I think it might be better if we went up that way. How about I change it and then we get the curve happening. Like this. So I'm lining up this line to stay straight with that one. I'm going to come down here, go in the ditch, move this forward. Come back, stitch in the ditch, move it forward by half an inch, keeping that straight line going straight. And again, now here you could simply move your ruler out of the way, ditch and come across to the other side to finish off. And the same thing, you could ditch back to come up here to then continue just like that. And then we have a very different effect. And the next one I want to show you is if we offset. So how about we do a straight one, but we'll do it so that it's coming across from there and it's going to go up Still, it's going to be at 90 degrees. 
This is probably a little extreme, but just so that you get the effect. So I'm keeping this lined up and I'm keeping this one pretty close up there and at the sides it will change. Now I've got to keep this going and that's it, that's what it will fit. So you can see how it's curving around even further on that side, it's wider on that side and that's purely because we've offset it. Okay, so now we're going to go this way and this time, the offset is way down here, so we may need to start back here to get that first line in. Go up, and I'm going to put it on there. And here we go. And that's a different effect there. Now to get some more inspiration, I do have about three of these books left, which is wonderful. Uh, the Art of Feather Quilting by Judy Allen. Now in here, Judy does go into some, gives you some more ideas. I do love the idea of curve cross hatching um, in between things with, combined it with the curves and the straight lines which is uh, really nice. It's a slightly different treatment. And if I can find the right page. Besides being a book all about feathers, there is just one section in here that is about curved cross hatching. So if you can see that one, you can see the different ways of putting the curves cross hatching in hearts to get a different look and on this page is quite a few different alternatives on putting it in ovals or circles and then of course in different shapes over here so uh, it's a great outline on how you would do it I love the plumpness of the feathers in here you can see that one there. So that one is actually coming up from the base of the heart and then coming across in that direction. So that was the first example I, tr I showed you. And of course you can achieve all of these curved cross hatching designs, not, not just with the curved cross hatching ruler. You can use the circle rulers with all the etch guidelines to help line everything up on these ones. Uh, they also have a 1 8 inch mark on the bottom of the ruler, so you can have a, a, an extra measurement to really fine tune some really fine work if you want them 1 8th one eighth of an inch apart as well as the quarter inch line markings. The rulers will have those. And then the uh, smaller circle rulers um, will give you a much, much stronger curve when you're stitching smaller pieces. Whereas the curve cross hatch ruler um, will give you a, a shallower curve, a 12 inch curve actually, that you can use on in larger spaces or gentler curve cross hatching.